and over their heads. Okay. Welcome everybody, I am Dr. Sparks, and today I'm going to be writing a story, several stories, with several of my guests here today. I have with me Evelyn and Henry, and we're going to be using their help to create several stories. Let's go ahead and get to it. I know a place that's really cool. It's up higher than any school. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Grab a jetpack and some fuel, cause we're going up high. High in the sky, come on up for a ride With your good friends at your side Imagination is your guide Cause it's Dr. Sparks, science story typewriting time Hello everyone and welcome! I am Dr. Sparks, here to type some stories for you today on my typewriter and I am joined as well by Evelyn and Henry and Cecilia, our incredible illustrator. Now, when we had last left our guests, we were in the middle of writing a story with Henry. And this story was about a really crazy situation. Okay, so there's this tiger, right? It's a man-eating tiger, ferocious tiger. He eats birds, he eats people, he eats whatever he can get away with. He even eats the key cards from the military attache, the person who's in charge of making sure you can go in and out of the doors. So, the tiger is eating some poor soul and gets seen by the sheriff's snake. And the tiger runs away as fast as he can because the snake is going to call the tiger police on him. The tiger runs so fast, not looking where he's going, that he runs out through the military base, the key card in his belly, letting him go through every single door. He runs out onto the runway, onto the tarmac, and into a fighter jet. He climbs on board and hits the wrong lever with his tail. And <laughs> wouldn't you know it that we now have a tiger inside of a jet engine, flying, taking off the runway. Now the tiger is terrified. He does not want to be on the fighter jet. But that is nothing at all compared to the people on the ground who now have to contend with a man-eating tiger who has a fighter jet. <laughs> so uh, we got to put the last line in the story right here. So I left it with um, the tiger was terrified, but that was nothing compared to how the people on the ground felt with the tiger flying a jet over their heads. Henry, do you think that there's like a last line that we could use here to tie the story with a bow, or is this the end of the story? Mm, I don't know. Maybe something like, um, we could even use a pun here. I love putting puns at the end of the story. Like, um, uh, uh, it was like, it was terrific or something, you know. <laughs> Maybe that's a little too close to a nationally known brand of cereal, but... <laughs> um. Can you guys think of a tiger pun? Striped. Stripes? What about stripes and military and something? Military stripes? Tiger stripes? They couldn't hear his roar over the roar of the engine. Roar and roar. That's a fun pun. Any of these sticking for you, Henry? This is your story, so. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I don't really care what happens. I just think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the people on the ground sure care what happens. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's end it on that note right there. So it was nothing compared to how the people on the ground felt with a tiger flying a jet over their heads. That's a yeah. pretty fun image to end with, I think. So let's go ahead and end the story with the end. I like this typewriter. All right. So now the story is done, but it needs a title. So what I'd like to do for you guys is we're going to look at the illustration that Cecilia has made for this story. And then I'm going to read the story for you. And then I'd like you, I'd like Henry to come up with a title for this story and I'll add it to the top. And then that'll be the end of the story. How does that sound? Okay. So oh. let's go ahead. Cecilia, do you want to tell us about what you, uh, what you drew here? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I was going for the snake, uh, getting the tiger. Maybe this is before he escapes to the military office in the back and the fighter jet over there. So, um, so yeah, th th this would probably be the cover. So that you, yeah, like, like, if you see the story, you're like, what's a fighter jet going, like happening over there? Like what's going on Like to intrigue people? <laughs> I know if I see a snake 
wrestling a tiger or, you know, uh, constricting a tiger with a fighter jet in the background, I instantly have questions and I want to know what the story is. That was a great story. But Henry, what is the title of this story? What should this story be called? I don't know. The Tiger and the Snake? <laughs> the Tiger and the Snake. Perfect. <laughs> All right. The Tiger and the Snake. Okay. That is awesome. <laughs> now, today and every day, that we do these typewriter stories. I pick a word of the day that goes along with the stories. If you can find a way to incorporate that word of the day into your stories, that is like bonus points. The word of the day today is flabbergast. Do Henry or Evelyn, do you guys know what the word flabbergast means? I do. Henry, what does it mean, Henry? It means like really surprised or really scared. Sometimes. Yes. Surprised or scared? You're, you're, you're very startled or astonished. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Evelyn, do you think you could come up with a sentence that would uh, cause me to be flabbergasted? Um, you're really surprised. Um, I got down the window and then maybe this snake actually got the tiger. <laughs> So I was writing the story. I thought I knew how the story was going to end. When all of a sudden, the snake got the tiger, crawled into the jet engine as it was 30,000 feet in the air. Something like that would happen and I would be flabbergasted. <laughs> so if you can use that word in your stories, that would be great. Also, for those of you who are watching at home, if you're tuning on, on the YouTube uh, channel for Maker Camp or Make Magazine, or if you're on the Facebook page for either Make or uh, Maker Camp, Please leave us a comment using a sentence that either uses the word flabbergast or if I read it will cause me to be flabbergasted. <laughs> and at the end, we will read those uh, comments and I will uh, react to them. <laughs> so, but with that though, um, I would like to go ahead and create a story with Evelyn now. So Evie, can you tell me what kind of a story you would like today? Maybe like a unicorn and a wolf fighting. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we have a unicorn and a wolf and they're fighting. Why are they fighting? Is there like, are they, um, what are they fighting over? Well, I'm reading Harry Potter right now and I'm kind of in the chapter of like, um, when there's a, some kind of creature that's trying to eat a unicorn and they were drinking the blood for life. Um, so maybe it could be like almost like Harry Potter, um, and the the wolf, the, kind, the wolf was trying to get the blood for life. Okay, sure. Okay, so we have a wolf, and he's attacking the unicorn because he thinks that if he can drink the unicorn's blood, then he'll be super super strong. Well, in Harry Potter, it's like. If any animal drinks unicorn blood, they'll stay alive forever until they drink something other than unicorn blood that'll make them um, die. Okay, okay. So um, how about this? Uh, in the dark, dark forest, there was one, was, oh dear, my keys are all stuck. There was one spot of light. It was, and I need the name of the unicorn now. What would you name a unicorn? Um, Katie. Katie the unicorn. Katie the unicorn. Katie lived a life full of magic and joy. And what are some like unicorny things that you could do that would be like, I really want to set up how like wonderful this unicorn is so that whenever the wolf attacks, we like really feel for this unicorn and we want Katie to win. What are like um, really good things you could do? What's the nicest thing you can think of? Maybe like a rainbow because in some pictures, like behind the unicorn, there's a rainbow. Perfect. So how about um, uh, Katie? Katie would spend her days 
her days. Painting unicorns, or painting rainbows. And um, what else? Maybe like, um, maybe giving uh, like forgotten, like uh, abandoned puppies a home or something. Yeah. Giving uh, abandoned puppies new homes. Yeah. Painting rainbows. There was one book I read, and there was a homeless puppy, and um, it actually belonged to a girl, and she couldn't find it. And to, but she actually, and then the she found her her um in the in like a cave, and she got the cat and the dog before the bear came out. Wow, that's awesome! So maybe she could be uh. Painting rainbows and returning lost dogs to their owner, or lost puppies to their owners. And or magical we, puppies. Lost magical puppies to their owners. <laughs> this is awesome, okay. Oh, and wouldn't you know it, somebody used the word flabbergast in a sentence. <laughs> Would you know this? Wait, I gotta read this because this is really funny. You ready? Somebody said, mm -hmm. When I saw the man throw away the winning lottery ticket out of the window, I was flabbergasted. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, whoever did that. We have to see, Evelyn, if we can try to put away to put the word flabbergasted in this story. I think we can. Okay. Um, so, I want another. What's that? What? Oh, sorry, I thought you said something. Okay. Um, and returning lost magical puppies to their owners. Now, one day. A, uh, was it a werewolf you said? Or just a wolf? Yeah, just a wolf. One day a wolf came out of the dark cave, out of the darkest uh, cave in the darkest corner of the dark, dark forest and attacked the unicorn. The wolf had uh, learned that if he drank unicorn blood, he would be uh, magically strong. How about? Yeah. Wrong. And he planned to use his magical strength to, uh, and here I think, so we had, we painted a picture of the unicorn who was always doing good things. She was painting rainbows and she was rescuing lost magical puppies, right? Mm -hmm. I think the wolf should plan to do equally bad things with his uh, evil strength now. You want to say hi to Ethan? Oh, hello, Ethan. How's it going? Mm. Eating an apple there, bud. <laughs> <laughs> it looks really tasty. Mm -hmm. Well, how about, do you think that the bad wolf could steal the apples from, from children? <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, he planned to use his magical strength to steal the apples from, how about steal the apples from little brothers? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And what else would be really bad? What's the worst thing you can think of doing? <laughs> Hitting people. <laughs> <How about, laughs> oh, geez, that is really terrible. What about if he turned all the stop signs to go signs? Oh. <laughs> and uh, every and maybe all the stoplights um, would stay red forever, and all the cars couldn't go where they needed to go. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> he would steal the apples from little brothers. And make it so all were frozen on red for all time. Trapping all the commuters. <laughs> this is awesome. Okay. So I think, um, how about when the wolf attacked, the unicorn was flabbergasted? Yeah. Okay. When the wolf attacked the unicorn, 
was flabbergast. <gasps> flabbergast. Hey, can you guys give me a flabbergast face? <laughs> That's pretty good. Ethan, can you look surprised or astonished? Like this. <laughs> <laughs> Great job! <laughs> when the wolf attacked, the unicorn was flabbergasted. And so, uh, were we. We loved the unicorn. And all the good things she did. Um, what do you think should happen next? Maybe. Do you think that the... Maybe the unicorn uses its magic horn to um, stop the wolf from fighting her. Let's see what Cecilia's working on right now. Um, I know. I wonder. Maybe Hold on, let's um, the wolf. <laughs> Look at Do you see this, this drawing she made? <laughs> <laughs> Cecilia's got the, the unicorn painting a rainbow. And, and uh, maybe... I kind of want to see a puppy dog on her back. Yeah, those are the puppies she's always rescuing. And maybe Ooh. the wolf was flabbergasted when she used her powers. <laughs> flabbergast! <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, uh, the wolf attacked the unicorn, and we we were as flabbergasted as well. Um, uh, how about the unicorn used her powers? Yeah. The unicorn used her powers. The wolf got a rainbow painted across its snout. Snout. And, and was flabbergasted. <laughs> and was flabbergasted. <laughs> then the lost puppies attacked. And the cuteness freaked out the wolf. Freaked out the wolf? Mm -hmm. I forgot, <laughs> I've got another bad one. Um, the wolf got off the avocados of the tree. Oh, that's so mean. He was stealing the avocados. <laughs> oh, man. We got to stop him. We got to make sure this wolf is not able to do that. <laughs> And the cuteness freaked the wolf out. And he ran back into the darkness. Uh, the unicorn nay in victory. And we cheered too. And the dark, dark forest Seemed a little less dark that day. And I think that is the end. <laughs> All right. So now um, the story is complete, but it needs a title. So can I read you guys the whole story? And then we can look mm -hmm. at uh, Cecilia's illustration one more time to inspire us. And then you guys can know what the title should be. Okay, here we go. You ready? In the dark, dark forest, there was one spot of light. It was Katie the Unicorn. Katie lived a life full of magic and joy. Katie would spend her days painting rainbows or rescuing lost magic puppies, returning them to their owners. One day, a wolf came out of the darkest cave in the darkest corner of the dark, dark forest. And he attacked the unicorn. Rawr! The wolf had learned that if he drank unicorn blood, he would be magically strong. And he planned to use his magical strength to steal apples from little brothers and to make it so all the stoplights were frozen on red and also to steal all the avocados from every tree in the world. <laughs> when the wolf attacked the unicorn, we were flabbergasted. 
We loved the unicorn and all the good things she did. But the unicorn was not to be defeated that easily. She used her powers. She painted a rainbow across the snout of the wolf. And then puppies, the lost magical puppies they attacked, magically cute, they swarmed the wolf. And the wolf was overcome with cuteness. He was flabbergasted. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, the unicorn, the wolf was freaked out and he ran back into the dark cave in the dark corner of the dark, dark woods. The unicorn neighed <laughs> in triumph. And we cheered too. Can you guys cheer with me? You ready? One, two, three. Oh, unicorn! Unicorn for the victory! <laughs> and the dark, dark forest seemed a little less dark that day. The end. Okay, now what does what is the title of that story? Do you think? Mm, maybe. The unicorn and the wolf. The unicorn and the wolf. That is a great title for the story. The Unicorn and the Wolf. Okay, and now that our story has a title, and Cecilia has made an amazing illustration, the next part of this process is we have to send the story to you. Oh, look at the puppies! <laughs> so, what I'm now going to do is I have a letter that I'm going to use to mail this story to you, Evelyn. I've got a letter with your name on it. Right here. And I'm going to fold your story into thirds so that it fits. Tuck it very carefully into the envelope. I'll make sure to lick the back. And tuck it so it's nice and tight. And then we'll put it into our mailbox right here. And now, whenever the mail truck comes, Chunk, chunk, chunk. And the mail truck is going to take the letter all the way to you. And you will get the story and you'll get the illustration as well. All right. I'd like to check in really quickly and remind you once again that uh, the word of the day is flabbergasted. And if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, please leave us a sentence that either uses the word flabbergast or else, if I read it, would make me flabbergast. The other thing we do each week is that we give everyone a prompt and we ask for children to send stories that match that prompt to us. So last week, I put out a call and I said, would anybody like to tell a story with the prompt? You've gotten lost in the forest of triangles. And this story is how you found your way out again. Now, Piper was nice enough to actually tell a story. And we have actually made some shadow puppet animations to go along with it. This was the story that Piper submitted. One day, I got lost in a forest of triangles. And first along came a bear. And I said, could you help me get out? But the bear said, I don't remember the way out of this forest. So he tried to help, but he couldn't help. And then second, they ran into a squirrel, and the squirrel said, what do you need? And the bear said, um, Ma, well, we need to get out of this forest of triangles. But, but the squirrel said, I'm not as smart as that bear. It just led you guys to me. So how could I know? But he tried anyway. Number three, they ran into a bird, and the bird says, "What do you need?" And and the and the bunny and bears and the school say, "Well, we need to get out of the forest." And then uh, the bird says, "Hmm, maybe I could maybe lead you to your sister." And they ran into her sister, and their sister was the smartest of all. And so they were happily ever after all, and they found their way out. Bye. Wasn't that wonderful? Can we give Piper a round of applause for that wonderful story she submitted? Now, if you would like to be part of next week's story, um, so the prompt for next week is going to be um, write a story about a fish named Doug.
You can only survive in cups of hot chocolate. So if you want to write a story that goes along with that, or if you don't know how to write yet, if you just want to have a parent take a video of you reading a story like that or telling a story, send it to us somehow. We'll find it. And we may be able to animate it and put it into the show, just like we did with that last one. So please, send us your story. Now, uh, we've gotten some other people giving us flabbergasting sentences here. So I'd just like to read this wonderful one from Rachel. <laughs> Suddenly, the snake slithered between the sharp teeth of the tiger and down his throat into his stomach, where he grabbed the key card the tiger had stolen! Oh, this is so relevant. <laughs> he slithered back out, commandeered the plane, delanded it, and delivered the tiger to the authorities. The spectators were flabbergasted! Ah! <laughs> Rachel, that is amazing. Not only is it a great story in its own right, but that is a particularly appropriate use of the word flabbergasted. And just to say hello to some of the other people that are giving us shout outs. Killian Lucas, hey man, it's great to see you. And we've also got Met Met uh, and Johnny from Brazil. It's great to see you both. Thank you for tuning in, guys. Now, Henry, would you like me to write you another story? We have just a little bit of time here. Oh, you know what? Actually, I think we may be out of time today. But if Henry, if you want to stick around, we, will, uh, we can definitely write you a story afterwards um, if you would like that. Is that the other Henry? No, that's you. Oh. <laughs> You're the only Henry. <laughs> Oh, thank you. That's fine. <laughs> yes. So, um, guys, I would like you to, um, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do some uh, sign-off credits here. We're going to talk a little bit about Family Maker Camp and how we were able to be brought to you today. But afterwards, if you could come up with one more sentence that's going to flabbergast me um, and then give them to me and we'll just all pretend to be flabbergasted one more time, that would be a great way to do this uh, right at the end, I think, if you guys are down for that. So I am Dr. Sparks, and this is Typewriter Stories. We do this every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific time. We're brought to you by Family Maker Camp, and you can find out more about Maker Camp. Um, there's all sorts of events like the Typewriter Stories, but also other things. There's a, a company called CodeJoy that does really cool events with programmable robots that you can control from your own computer. Um, and there's also a really fun uh, coding and bug-themed event later this week as well that you should really tune in for. To find out more about events like that, makercamp.com slash events is where you can find everything. And if something is being live streamed, it'll be at makercamp.com slash live stream. If you want to learn more about me, Dr. Sparks, go to drsparksshow.com and you'll find out all the information there about the shows that I do and about uh, the other projects that I have going now. And with that, guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. We had today, we had Henry who gave us that awesome story about the fighter jets, the tigers, the snakes, and everything that happened there. We had Evelyn and Ethan giving us awesome stories about unicorns and wolves and puppies and painting. We had Cecilia who did these incredible illustrations. She's the most amazing illustrator I've ever worked with. She's got such talent, more talent in her, the fingernail on her pinky than and most be uh, she's just so talented. This is amazing. I am Dr. Sparks, and thank you guys for tuning in. Now, Evelyn, Henry, do you guys have a sentence for me for flabbergasted? Flabbergast me! Bring it on! Uh, I do not, actually. <laughs> okay, well, Evelyn, give me a flabbergasting sentence. <laughs> um, so, uh, when we went to the park, Ethan was running around the fountain, and he didn't know it, but he actually fell into the um, water. <laughs> Fine. Ethan, were you flabbergasted? No, but, but, but it's kind of little dirty water, and, and then, like, I went underwater, and, like, I, 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 I was surprised, and then, and then I didn't know it. No, I was going underwater. So, yeah, flabbergasted. You were flabbergasted. <laughs> Ethan, what did your face look like whenever you, you fell into the into the water like that? Kind of, um, it, it felt like the same face. <laughs> well, okay. No. Your normal, yeah, I mean, it was still the same face. Yeah, that makes sense to me. All right, Henry, you got one? Flabbergast me. Yeah. Uh, so... This really only makes sense if you're afraid of spiders. I'm definitely afraid of spiders, but one morning I woke up, like true story. I woke up and like, I was just like doing my own thing. And then I see a little black dot on like on my bed. Oh no. 
And then it has eight legs. No. And, yeah, it's a spider. Were you clever? Oh, yes, I was. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. One time I was opening a pomegranate. Have you ever seen a pomegranate before? Um, uh, I think so. They're kind of like a, a red orange kind of that has like yeah. a flower on the top, you know? Well, mm -hmm. I put my thumb in the flower to open up the pomegranate and a spider jumped out of the top. <laughs> really? It was, it was like, am I in a story right now? It felt like I was. I was not. It was just real life. Just, I was flabbergasted. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, thank you so much again for tuning in. Just to remind you one more time, the prompt for next week, if you want to write a story, and Henry and Evelyn, you both are more than welcome to write a story, but anybody watching on YouTube or Facebook, um, if you feel like writing a story, please write it, share it with us, either a written story, a recording of a story, whatever you want, uh, we'll do something with it. Um, but the prompt is, write a story about a fish named Doug who can only survive in cups of hot chocolate. With that, guys, once again, thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm Dr. Sparks, and until next time, keep your typewriters oiled and your faces flabbergasted! <laughs> <laughs>